December 3rd, calling select board meeting to order. Our first item of business is consider additions or adjustments to the agenda. Are there any additions to the agenda? By me. A executive session for the appointment of an employee, one VSA 313A3. Okay. We'll tuck that between five and six. That's an additional interview? Correct. Okay. All right. Item number two is public comment. Is there any public comment? Yes. Casey. Uh, question. Uh, I'm not the only one who has trouble hearing when the chairs are set back the way they generally are. Uh, and wonder if we could have chairs a little closer. These are closer now, aren't they? Uh, because they were way, way back there. Yeah, they were. The That's, uh, I tell you, that it was problematic. So, just passing on some. Is that when you're listening online or when you're no, first, here. in person? Here, yeah. And I, and I didn't just move on and up because, because I have to, but uh, I heard other, when you did the uh, okay. review of the budget, of, or you know, the you grocery is your end report where a lot of people were here. Yeah. They were saying, I don't have to sit so far. Um, we'll just pull everybody right up. Tight. Yeah. Yeah. We could certainly move the chairs up for the next meeting. So I don't. It, it I don't think there's a ton of attendance for this meeting, <laughs> but I appreciate the feedback. Okay. Are you so, okay with? Uh, my particular question, though, is uh, about the process for uh, in the process for hiring the coordinator. Lisa Cruz is not here. I know that she. Told someone, I think you, you know, I am available to be part of this process. Didn't hear one word back, but I know she talked to you subsequently. Um, and but my question is, um, what is the process going to be? I know you're screening for interviewing people tonight, but then when you do the self representing state park or build the job and has an interesting read about what's who's gonna work and who isn't what's up with us um and why don't we know <laughs> because we've always been, it's always been done with us being involved I mean always it we're on our third iteration, right? Um, since the so voters I, passed the position. Mark, act, active meeting. But oh. Thank you for coming. That clock is set. <laughs> so uh, I'm just asking, what, what's the process going to be? If I remember correctly, last time we interviewed candidates um, and then they were brought around to meet with uh, skate park and rec committee. There's no rec committee members. If Lisa would like to meet them, that's fine. And then we offered the job. There was no real reservations on our candidate last time. Um, last, last, last time was Wrong. Time. Last time that we did a formal interview process was David Ellerby. And he tendered his resignation within two weeks, and we offered it to Dean. Yeah, there was plenty of participation. Yeah. yeah. If you would like to be, if you would like to go for a second round of interviews, we could ask the board if they're interested in that. Um, but like, well, and, and, it's a direct and, it's a direct report to the town administrator. It needs yeah. to work with town committees. That's, that's, um, that's all fine. Uh, I ran into Shane. What's also confusing to me is that I ran into Shane Spence and said, you know, hey, what's happening and how what is going to happen? He said, oh, I think it's going to happen that this is a, tonight is going to be a first screening and then there will be a second round of interviews involving people like you. So I'm here to clarify. Can I make a suggestion? Certainly. Of expediting the fire uh, as soccer has started, but we need to get somebody in the position for the next four quickly. Um, do you have any reservations of just having invited case of the executive session tonight? 
just be part of the question and answers. I guess my only reservation is she has said there's another person that's interested who has been heavily involved well, in rec. Really um, how's the board feel? I think the board should take care of it on its own. I can't now to agree with the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I think the board should be an executive session. That's it. And that's fine. I'm, I don't want to disrupt, but it, it's a concern that. Uh, you know, a lot of the job description and stuff involves work at the park. So. Yeah. Do you have any reservations if the board were to select a preferred candidate to meet with the skate park? And if there's no reservations, then we could make an offer of employment? Um, I guess not. Um, part, part of I hadn't planned on bringing this out, but it's my secret. Um, part of my reserve of what's in my head, me and my committee, is that uh, this is my last year as chair. Um, and, you know, we know we are working on having a better working, uh, more efficient and effective committee that doesn't depend on me doing all the work because I'm not going to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Not going to be in the same role, uh, which means a lot more dependence on direct coordinator. So uh, we all know that, but you guys don't. First that. communication. Yeah. First communication to the board. Yeah, right. Wonderful timing. Right, right, right. Um, so we'll have to take that into consideration. We'll have to take that into consideration. I'm not trying to yell. <laughs> oh, no, that's I wish you would. <laughs> yeah, the air conditioner on, we wouldn't have to have those windows open. Well, it's just, it's, it's just traffic. Yep. So, as long as, okay, if we can affect some kind of interface uh, and wait for us to assess and give feedback for a final decision, or a final decision is made, I don't care how we do it. But I do think it's, I, I personally think it's Okay. So that's my say. All right. And you, you guys figure out how you want to do it. Okay. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Making a note right now. All right. Our next agenda item is select board review and preparation for the industrial park meeting. Um, we only have roughly 20 minutes. Tom has some information printed out. Um, is there more information the board would like printed out for the informational meeting? Duncan, um, did you receive this in full via email for what we have in uh, front of Tom, Tom gave me a call in advance, so I think I know what you've got in front of you. Um, okay. I may have a couple things that you don't. I just wanted to ask the question I assume that your request to Beth to provide the Facebook authorization information to Lydia was based on trying to get uh, a copy of the warning and notice out on out on Facebook. The informational sheet. Well, the informational sheet was out there, but I think what's not out there is I, I've had people asking uh, what's the what's the time and date of the actual informational meeting? And that I don't think that's on the informational sheet. I think that's on the warning and notice. So we need to make sure that gets out there so that people are in fact aware of what the what the date of the informational meeting is, date, time, and place. Yeah, certainly. You got that, Tom? Um, take care of it in real time. Okay. That's a great point. Patrick. And we should get it out on Front Porch Forum, too. Yeah. Multiple times, not just once. Yeah, yeah. the sheet was on today, but the uh, the bond vote resolution, correct? Well, there's a notice. Um, you know, there's an, a, a, a warning. Um, and on the warning, it says... Uh, specifically that an informational meeting will be held on Monday, September 9th at seven o'clock in the evening at the Johnson Elementary School gym. 
So that's that's the piece that I think really, you know, is kind of critical that people have that information. Yeah. You can get that out there on all channels. Okay. Uh, the bond vault sheets for the informational meeting, these are ones that Duncan had done some writing on. I think clean sheets would be better in paper copy. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. I've got a version that's a PDF file, Evan, um, which which would be like a cleaned up copy, I believe. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, yeah, PDF file. I, I mean, I have them too. Tom, I believe, has them. On the town website? Yeah. Um, it's... It's a lot to take in. Um, these will be at the informational meeting. If anybody asks for them, uh, they're a public record document, just send it to them. Um, yeah, I, don't, I think this will confuse public more. If somebody asks for it, we got it. Yeah. You know, I think Duncan did a good job of you know, tax rate impacts. One question I have, John, is. What is the what amortization schedule is the board most interested in? Have you guys, has there been any discussion or talks about this? Or is it? I'd rather have a 10 because we actually could have had some good. Yeah, we haven't discussed it. Yeah, we haven't really discussed um, it. And that's going to be that might come up at the information meeting, and it might just be nice to have that unified come up. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Duncan? Um, I I would probably go with a thirty year and pay it off sooner if we, you know, based on selling the lots. And the only reason I say that is because I think the least impact on the tax rate and the individual tax bill would be best and and you know there's absolutely no penalty for paying it off early um which hopefully we'll be able to do but that's my thought mark 30 30 makes sense hopefully we'll be no Long term, I don't. Yeah, there shouldn't be, but that's a longer projection. Um, you guys put me in a wonderful spot. Uh, I guess I'll I'll, su I'll support the thirty. Uh, yeah. Um, so. And I don't think we actually have to make that decision until. You know, we're probably going to get asked at the informational meeting. Um, you know what our what our thoughts are on that. So I guess it's good to have an answer or a potential answer. But I don't think we actually need to take the vote on that until after we get authorization. If we do, no, I think we're just taking a temperature of the board, um, least tax implications, and with the sale of lots, have it paid off before we hit that point. Um, another thing that I think would be handy for the informational meeting would be the printouts of the proposed parcel layouts, I guess. Is that how I want to word it? Yeah, the wide area print. Should, should that go on the website? It's already there. I mean, it's like kind of hidden a little bit. You know, right up on the, under news, so it's like warning, resolution, you know, so it's like right on top. If it can be brought up to that front page feed, yeah. Um, can you can you print out the the um, the plan sheets on the on the large scale printer so that we could have those taped up to the wall or something? We're gonna have a huge area. Yeah. 
I don't know I think if it has any interest in this or not, but you know, the tax the tax rate impacts uh, 3153 for a 10-year note for $10,000 assessed value. For a 10-year, it's 945.90 for a 20-year note. It's 1255.20 and a 30-year note is 1591.20. I don't know if that's useful information or people can figure it out themselves, but that would give us... Well, in fact, the tax rate? Yeah. Well, total tax. Right. For, for that particular yeah. portion of it. So, what so that's going to be an increase of their taxes for those three oh, years. Because you multiplied it out over the year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if we go with a 10 year note and you pay it off in 10 years, there's a total impact of $945.90 for this portion of their tax rate per 100000 Right. Well, no, that's based on a 30K home. So you take 3153 times three times 10, and that comes out 945, 90. See what I mean? For a $100,000 home. A $300,000 home. This is 31, the way it's written, is 3153 per 100,000. Yep. Of assessed value. Of assessed value. So right. if you have a $300,000 home, it's 3153 times three, times 10, okay. so 945, 90. That's what it would be for 10 years. Okay, I, I wasn't sure that you had multiple, you put the three. Yeah, so I figured like like, like an average of $300,000 home, and that's what it would come out to. Yeah. So if it gets stretched out for 20 years, it would cost them 1253, excuse me, 1255, 20, and 30 would be 1591, 20. But if we do a 30 year note and pay it off sooner, it's going to be a less of a burden because it's going to be a lower tax rate. So, and there can be a lot of people who say 30 years. I won't be paying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said in the beginning, I'd rather go 10 year note and get it paid off quicker and pay less interest. That's good information. We can do up a, an Excel spreadsheet over the next week that would show that and hand it out as information. You want that? Who do you want to do that? Uh, that's a pretty simple one. It's, you just add it in. It's not a rocket science figure. Yeah. I'm not sure. You guys think? 50 copies of everything is enough for everybody there. How many? 50. Oh, yeah. I think that's plenty. <laughs> yeah. That would probably be 40 more than we need. <laughs> you never know. You do never know. You never do. Right. And we don't have access to a printer over there. So, really, a, a hundred sheets is not going to kill us. Yeah. I agree with Mike. Like a hundred? Yeah. yeah. We have a big community-wide meeting the next night. Who's going to be there for setup? Logistically, we have a meeting here. 6.30. At 6.30. We have a meeting there at 7. That needs to be set up before we go there. Yes, we ask. Rosemary. I knew what it's at. I'm willing to do all the work. I just need somebody to point out, hey, this is where chairs are, this is where chairs are. Um, and it's set up just like it would down here. Yeah. Yeah, with the board up front and chair. The chairs are underneath the stage. You can set out one. The tables are in the far closet with the very straight side of the gym. You'll open the door and just never know who's right there. We could roll out uh, one. Thing of chairs to put them out. If we needed more, we could roll out another one. I mean, uh, roll out three and set one up. If we could get in there, if the board could get in there at six o'clock, we or at five thirty, we could do it ourselves rather than pay the town through overtime to go do it for us. Do we already have access figured out? We have permission to be there. Um, we can stay late. It's not. 
I'm going to get some way to get a fund to terminate. We might have to cut our staff and leave trust. That's one of the big rubs about this whole thing, this combined school business. We lost our school. We lost our gym. We have to have permission to use our own stinking gym. That was the biggest mistake we ever made. Didn't involve without you. It, it needs to be figured out. You as a building that this town paid for. We need to get in. I could ask if I fly in. If, yeah, if I need to come help set up, I will, but it needs to be set up before we come to our meeting here. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to help too, if, if I just get a little advance notice. I don't think we could be there any earlier than five in case after we'll be there, we'll be there at five. Yeah. Take care of that. So, so run me through this. There at five, we set this up, we come here at 6.30, 6 get done by 645, 650, 650, or seven, informational, and then another select board meeting after that. <laughs> it's going to be a good night. And the night before is another good night. Night after? Or night after is another night after. It's the big community meeting. Yeah. All right. All right. I think it might also be good to have copies of the Yellow Woods Associates Market Study available. And I don't know if we need the written report from Ruggiano Engineering, um, you know, whether that makes sense or not. I mean, maybe it's worth reaching out to Mumley to see if they have, you know, any basic information that they would feel comfortable putting together that we could you know, have out there for information. It might also be prudent to invite Pat Ripley and um, Tori, uh, what's Tori's last name? Elwig, I was just gonna say the same thing. Yeah. Just speaking of everything we need copies of, I mean, Ruggiano's study, anything Mumley wants to include, Yellowwood, Mass, the Schedule in the schedule. You want the funding stack? Your copies of the funding stack options, or is that too much information? It's all information that we have. That might get a little confusing. Um, <laughs> it might be good information for the board to have, but I, I don't, I don't know that we need to hand it out as a handout. But uh, do you want the tax rate on um, maybe part of the interstation schedule? Uh, that tax rate piece that Mike just described. Well, we have the amortization schedules and PDFs that are clean. Should I print out 100 copies of those? It seems like a lot, but it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. What do you want to Why don't we have? compromise 75? 75 yeah, copies of, of everything. Everything. Everybody that walks into the meeting should be able to get the whole package. They, pick they, they should be able to have at least two, if not three. <laughs> Give everybody the whole packet. That way, then nobody will say they didn't get the information. The funding stack does get confusing. Just like if the bond vote, you know, that backup plan, if the bond vote does not go through, it's like probably going to be a question that comes up. And that funding stack is a tool to show, the, to show that, right? That's why we got it. Like that. But maybe, maybe it's just confusing things. It's a lot. Let's be able to know that three quarters of it is funded by some other source. Other than the town. That's a good point. Tom, can you drag a uh, a microphone a little like in between you and Shane? I'm I'm having a real hard time hearing anything that you say. Um he was he was saying, you know, if people ask if there's a backup plan for the bond vote, the funding stack, 
um, shows where all the money adds up. Is there any way to do a easier to read version of that funding stack? There's got to be. I mean, I think the funding stack is important for people to know about. It just shows like how much work went into it. It also shows like the historical investment and it shows like the, the MBRC loss. That if we don't do it now, it's not coming back, you know? Right. Like it's, just right. like, it's like that financial explanation. I mean, people need to know that three quarters of it approximately is coming from other sources other than the town. Yeah. And that's, and, that's uh, how you show it in like a graph form. Almost, yeah. you know? And the, but the deal is that the boards have spent many years on this and many hours and a lot of money has actually been spent on this. Yeah. Just to get where we are today. D Duncan, you had talked with uh, Pat Ripley maybe eight, nine months ago, and he did a little bit of market research on other industrial parks um, and the lot sale prices per acre. But there's an email out there from him, I believe. Is that something we should have available too? I mean, this is going to make marketable lots. Um, somebody asked, how much are you going to sell them for? That was market study by L LADC, right? Yeah, I think he did sort of an informal um uh, survey of other economic development agencies in the state to get a you know kind of a ballpark idea of what sale prices were and if I remember correctly it was anywhere from 50 to 100,000 an acre it was a wide range and that, yeah but that was that's dated isn't it Duncan? How long that was, was what when was that done after March probably at least half a year yeah Okay. Maybe April time period. Yeah, I can try and see if I can find it, Evan. I understand that it's ballpark figures. Um, but if somebody asks, what are you hoping to get out of it? We're hoping to sell marketable industrial, like commercial lots back on the tax base and there is some light duty market studying that supports it could be this much per acre. I'm selling for $50,000 an acre, it'll be $850,000, which would pay back the entire investment. And then you have the grand list paying, you know, perpetually after that. Right. I think it's important too that people are going to ask, why are you not, um, at least I don't get it. Why are you not putting some residential? And I think we have to be clear with folks that that's not allowed. That yeah, it's not, it's not a select board decision. Right? It's not a select. And, and the, the grant came through because that's what I'm hearing from people. Like we need housing out of the floodplain. The people that are going through the buyout would like to buy a lot. Yeah. And so yeah. we need to be prepared to um, answer that. Mm -hmm. And let, let them know that's not an option. Yeah, if you know, if you want to have with the NBRC grant, there is right. no option. Yeah. Board, um, we are heading 630. I believe we do have a candidate here for an interview. Could we table this until after the executive sessions or is there anything more quick that needs to be said? Hearing none. I would entertain a motion to enter executive session for employment of an employee. Is it employment of an employee? I think, I think. There's a supposed to be evaluated. Because we have to like read the statute and that's like clunky. You need a motion, Evan? I, yeah, I do. I'm making it right now. Yeah. If we go okay. to executive session for employment of employee, be under one BSA. 
Thirteen, thirteen. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? I believe Thomas Gallinet is invited to stay on. Yes. Hi. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And the eyes have it. The board is entering executive session at oh, 6.30. Yeah,